Down Home Alabama workshop tour. Hola, woodworkers. Paul Croster here, small workshop guy. I'm in Northern California, but today we're going to drop in somehow magically, mystically through all sorts of electronics, and we're going to do a workshop tour in Fairhope, Alabama, for a guy named Brandon Fisher. Brandon has a beautiful workshop, and I think you're going to be excited to see it. Just a little warning, some of you might get just a little bit jealous of Brandon. I know I did, so, <laughs> oh man, did I ever. But that's all right. Jealousy can be a healthy emotion sometimes. Usually it's not, but sometimes it is. So let's switch to Fairhope, Alabama, and connect with Brandon Fisher. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing? Good, how are you today? So folks, Brandon Fisher, Fairhope, Alabama. Where is Fairhope? Uh, we are on Mobile Bay, down down near the Gulf, uh, south of I-10 in the, the bottom corner of Alabama. Okay, bottom corner. South east corner, south west corner. Uh, so there's there's two counties. Uh, Alabama's got a little little boot heel kind of that sticks down and separates uh, Mobile Bay, uh, and then the rest of Alabama is above uh, the Panhandle of Florida. So we're we're down in that that little part uh, south of I-10, about okay. 20 minutes from Mobile. You would think the old workshop guy would know more about it since he lived in Birmingham, and but that was at age two, and now being 79. Uh, I've kind of forgotten <laughs> what it looked like, so so I'll I'm look sure it up it's, on it's a map. Different anyway. All right. Well, let's get a little start here. So you've got a wood shop here, that yeah. you're in, and and I see you like Interstate 10, so you got that back on your wall there. That and, was a uh, birthday present from a buddy of mine. So all right. And what size is your wood shop? Uh, it is 16 by 28. All right. Give or take. So, so for most of us in the small work, small workshop woodworking community, that would be pretty large. But uh, we'll forgive you, All and right. we'll go from there. What would you now? You're not a full time woodworker. You do this no. as, a, as a hobby. Yeah, this is a hobby. All right, and your regular okay. occupation is what? Uh, farming, technically, but uh, I also work at a brewery uh, and. Uh, I used to do theater, used to be a theatrical rigger, oh. uh, as well as building sets and doing lights and all that. So, Oh, so you've got some heavy construction in your blood. Yeah, having, yeah. I've been, having I've been done building stuff since uh, high school, basically. All right, cool. Did a uh, grandfather or father, did somebody lead you this direction? As uh, a hobby? Both. Uh, both my grandparents uh, were, were woodworkers and tinkerers. Uh, my mother's father was his family had a hardware store and a blacksmith were blacksmiths before that uh and then my dad uh was a farmer and grew up on a farm and and uh my grandfather had a had a workshop and as did my dad and still does well when you have a farm you gotta learn how to fix a lot of things right yeah i didn't yeah. grow up on a farm so uh yeah. this is uh it's the wife's family that's uh that I'm in the in the farming business with now. So. Okay, all right, family business. Uh, that sounds like a dangerous proposition, but uh, we won't go down that road. Uh, my uh, company got taken over by my two sons, and uh, they got me out of there pretty quickly after that. <laughs> no, there you go. Much to my pleasure, <laughs> believe me. After forty some years of running one company, all, all right. right. Uh, so. Why don't you switch your camera to your back camera and then start us with what you would say is the highlight of your wood shop. All right. And we'll let you just uh, kind of go around and do a tour. All, All right. right. It's the most just boring so you, shot. Just so you know. <laughs> I, so. Oh! <laughs> That's probably the highlight. Uh, oh my God. 19 foot long miter station runs almost the whole length of that wall oh my god uh so every one of those is a cabinet storing something yeah so the top is cabinets and the bottom is drawers there's 30 drawers all along there wow i 
Let me have a little more close up of the uh, face there, the face of the bottom. Oh, beautiful grain. Yeah, God, wish... so, and they've got these aluminum extrusion poles on them. All right, cool. So, all right. You mean you didn't do hand? Bolt. You didn't do hand cut dovetails for all those drawers? I did not. Oh, uh, this is shop okay. furniture, and I just slapped it all together. All right. So, <laughs> holy mackerel! Somebody who's practical. Uh, uh, yeah. And I love the bird's eye up on the top. Uh, yeah, it's all Baltic birch, all grain matched all the way across. Uh, so the the face. Other than that little part around the miter saw, the face is all grain matched across there. All so right. that was that was quite an endeavor. I yeah. only had one shot at it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you got to cut it right the first time, otherwise you're in trouble. So, so you had several yeah. sheets of uh, four by eight Baltic birch that you liked, and you worked hard to figure out how to cut the components out of those sheets. That's right. Uh, That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. How many hours, how many days, how many weeks, how many months? How long did that puppy take you? Uh, I want to say it took me about two weeks to to get most of it done. Uh, the The main carcass was there pretty fast, and then all the drawers took quite a lot longer and a lot more wood than I expected. So, Yeah, isn't that amazing how you think you're going to build a little project and then when you get all the wood and you cut up all the parts and you look at it and say, holy mackerel, that takes a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, this that. ended up being, this ended up being 26 sheets of plywood. Wow. <laughs> wow. Fortunately at prior prices, not at today's prices, huh? Yeah, I built this last summer. So when I say today's so. prices, I'm talking about post pandemic 2021 where <coughs> apparently lumber's in scarce supply so yeah well, that's beautiful okay and tell me about the uh the miter saw yeah it's um a bosch uh the whatever they call it the glider or whatever it's got the articulating arms so yeah. and i built i built this shroud around it for dust collection which does pretty good and this this piece here just lifts out uh, uh -huh. If yeah. I need to, if I need to do bevel cuts or, or anything like that. All right. So, um, you got a little, most of the time. You got a little hammer laying down there on the left hand side. Oh you, yeah, this was this was a project I made. So. You made that okay. Did you make a batch of those or just one for yourself? No, I just made one for myself. Uh, that's a Brazilian ebony handle, and I found this piece of bird's eye. That had this uh, inclusion in it that I just kind of thought looked like flames. Uh, when I when I split the piece of wood, I could see it on the end. So this is the other side of it. Oh, cool! And uh, I kind of thought it looked like flames, so I uh, made yeah. a, a hammer head out of it. All right, cool. All right, so that's your. Uh, that is a massive, beautiful. Uh, that's just got to be so nice to have that much storage. So obviously you've used up a lot of your wall space, so you better have some cabinets to store stuff in. My yeah. shop is the opposite. I've got the French cleat system and everything hanging up. And uh, uh, so There's the, the DeWalt cabinet. All right. So we have a DeWalt cabinet. <laughs> then do we have a Milwaukee cabinet and then a Makita no, cabinet? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, okay. All right. We just... So you're, uh, you would say you're a DeWalt guy for at least your uh, handheld power tools? Yeah, and this is all, you know, fairly well organized. <laughs> yeah, you could say that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Compared they're... to most. <laughs> yeah. So a little Festool dust collection underneath, I see. Yeah, I got, I got the little CT15, which works pretty good. And a little rolling stool store under there as well. And then uh, coming over here, we got my uh, Delta drill press. Uh, bought that a while back. Uh, it was on a good sale. And then I got that uh, keyless chuck from Amazon Warehouse for an unbelievable price. Uh, I've, been, I've been drilling metal on it, which I try not to do. Uh, yeah. But my other drill press, which I used for metal, uh, got dropped while it was being moved. Oh. So. It's uh, 
it doesn't drill straight anymore. So, how long but, ago did you move into this shop? Uh, I've I've been moving for the last year and a half, basically. Right. Uh, okay. We bought the place, and then uh, we had a pipe break, which flooded the whole place out. Oh. And then, uh, just as they got that put back together, Sally came, hurricane, and ripped the roof off. <laughs> <We're>, so. <laughs> Uh, I won't ask you if you had all everything all properly insured and everything. Uh, yeah, we did actually. Uh, this this you. side of the building, luckily, was was untouched, uh, yeah. other than some some leaks down the walls, which you can still see where water ran down the walls in a few places, but uh, pretty minor, all in all. I try to tell people that if you want to protect your tools from both thieves as well as natural disasters, the answer. And the only answer is insurance. So, yeah, it might hurt to write that check, but it uh, feels pretty good to have written it and then get thirty thousand dollars worth of stuff back. Now, is that drill press uh, on rollers? Yeah, it's it's on a mobile base. Okay, so uh, so if you so have if I need to drill something piece, long, yeah. I can I can All roll right. it on out of there. Uh, okay, really easily. All right. Uh, okay. And I've got air plumbed over there so I can, you know, spray stuff off if I need to. Cool. Uh, and then I can run a dust collection hose over and use this little clampy thing to just kind of clamp it to the table uh, if I'm if I'm doing wood. Uh, wow. I think that one's a dust right one, a Rockler one. All right. Yeah, so this is this is my French cleat system. It's just clamp storage uh, over here on the side. Pretty, so, pretty nicely organized. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, since I've been moving stuff slow into here, I've, I've had to, I don't bring anything that I don't find a home for. Uh, so uh, I don't have a lot of junk, you know, just sitting around, luckily. Good. Um, Good. And then I got, I went a little crazy at uh, Black Friday with the, the DeWalt storage cases here. <laughs> so you know when they were 9.99 a piece i got a whole bunch of them uh and Oof. then the price of wood got really high so uh what's oh, gonna mean. happen is those uh -huh. and those sustainers are all gonna live in an outfeed table that's gonna be here in place of that little tiny outfeed table yeah so I was going to ask you the way you had those DeWalt's all stacked up. If you needed something out of the bottom one, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, there's but only. What you're telling me is you're going to put them. You're going to put them all in cabinets. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's only stuff in about the top five of them. So, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then unfortunately, the stuff that should go them and go in them is in this drawer. <laughs> yeah. I got you. So I, got I do have a couple of messes, but uh, I'll get that all straightened out. We all have one of those, all right? Yeah. So then we come over to the router table. Uh, I built that to match. So okay. this is uh, drawers with the router bits on this side. Uh, I got, you know, the tools you need and then the extra uh, plates all in here. Uh-huh. And then it's got the, the big Porter cable router in there. Yeah. So, and this is all Rockler, Rockler, uh, cast iron table and, and, uh, lift. Huh. So, beautiful. beautiful. Uh, yeah, I really, I really like it. Uh, this is my old router table, which I keep around. Uh, there's one project I do that needs an eighth inch round over on it. And this thing I just keep set up now to do that. <laughs> So it just always has an eighth inch round over in it, and I just whip them on through there. So, but yeah, that well, thing I've had, I've had that a long time, uh, probably fifteen years now, and it's done all right. Yeah, a lot of people want to know why a person needs more than one router, and the answer is well, there's different sizes as well as the best thing to do is have some different bits that live in different routers, and then you're ready to just grab them and use them. So. Exactly. And then I got Grizzly Bandsaw. Uh, it's got the, the extension on it, so it's 12-inch resaw. Uh, and I've got the uh, Laguna Resaw King blade. Uh-huh. Wow. So uh, it just leaves buttery smooth. Uh, oh, yeah. 
And that was yeah, their anniversary it's... edition, wasn't it? It was, yeah, which you can still buy somehow, even though, like, <laughs> I bought it 10 years ago right. or more. So, uh, and then I got uh, DeWalt Planer, uh, Rigid Sander, and, and that little router table. And then those two things are on little drawer cabinets I built as well. So Straight knives or helical heads on the planer, on the thickness planer? It's got the Shelix in it, yeah. I should have known. So. I should have known. Yeah. <laughs> well, right there. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, it, they cut down on the noise. It seems to work better. Uh, I was dull in blades pretty quick, so uh, it makes it worthwhile, I think. Yeah, I I did the same thing, but it's funny how your blades cost you almost as much as the thickness planer. Exactly. The, uh, you've got and then above that, I got some wood storage. Uh-huh. Uh, all through there. It goes kind of all the way over there. And it looks so, like you got a lot of foam insulation blown up into the ceiling. Yeah, it's all insulated in here. Uh, I don't have aircon in here yet. Uh, that's that's on the list of things I want to do. So, knowing uh, you're in Alabama without the air conditioning, how what's your worst case scenario in there? Stay pretty uh, cool. Well, so I kind of blow air conditioning in from the other room, and. Okay. Uh, I got, we're about 80 degrees in here right now. All right. Okay. So not horrible. It's tolerable. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's uh, that's probably the newest tool I got, a jet uh, eight inch joiner. Uh, it's helical head. Uh, yeah. I had uh, one of the little rigids uh, that just didn't have the power to, to go through some of these hardwoods. So. Yeah. Yeah. I had a little Q-Tech. They don't. They don't go by that name anymore. Bench top, and I, I, I was, I'm sure it was the operator error, not the machine. But I just could never get good results, and so now I have the eight inch helical head, uh, powermatic, and somehow it compensates for operator error. Yeah. All right. And, uh, and then the wow. the big belt sander. Uh, picked that up used a little while back. Uh, that thing's that thing's pretty awesome. It'll it'll remove some material. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then a little, little more wood storage. Uh, and then back here, I got a couple of sheets of plywood. Uh, you know, with the blue foam for the track saw. Uh, and then uh, I got a big hose reel, and and track saw storage or track saw track storage. So okay. And that's that's pretty much the wood shop we're back well i guess we forgot the table saw which is here in the center. Oh. <laughs> i like it <laughs> pretty much oh i forgot this little puppy <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh uh, man so, so that's the uh, uh, pcs what or is that the industrial it's, no it's the pcs and it's it's 1.75 horsepower this is the first place i've had that had 220 uh, uh -huh. so i may convert it over but it's it's doing its job right now, so uh, I do have the I do have the Wixi uh, digital gauge on it, which is great, uh, and then the Jessam Jessam guides are on wow. a mag switch. So, wow! And was that a beer refrigerator down below there? What was that? Uh, no, that's a little Craftsman toolbox that I oh, picked up. Oh, there you up, go. Okay. Uh, when <laughs> Sears was going out of business, yeah, uh, it's about their cheapest model. Uh, but it fits under there. It, it used to slide out this side until I put the, the digital readout, but now it'll right. slide out the back where I can get to it at the end. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty nicely upgraded saw stop, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I right. really like that saw. I was, uh, I was at a tech shop in Durham, and they were doing a demo, and the guy actually was you know, getting ready to do the hot dog test and put his hand into the blade accidentally. He was a oh. hand <laughs> And... You know, nobody filmed it because everybody was waiting for the hot dog. Uh, and this was probably 10 years ago now, uh, maybe more than that. And uh, I was like, it, all he had was a little red spot on his pinky finger. And I was like, okay, if I'm getting a table, a new table, <laughs> it's gonna stop, you know? Yeah, I know. So. I know it's expensive, but 
You know what? $2,700, $3,000, you know, save up for it, budget for it, but do it is my opinion because the hand surgeon is a quarter million dollars. I mean, exactly. To put your stuff back on. So uh, it gives me a certain level of comfort. I wish my bandsaw, my drill press, my uh, thickness plate, I wish they all had some sort of device that would protect against my stupidity. But so far, the only one I've found is a saw stop. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I wish right. I wish you could get it in more things. Well, that is one beautiful workshop is you got anything else hidden anywhere you know you, i didn't see a lathe i didn't see well uh, oh, this no. Door. oh no oh no here we go we oh, got a little more stuff my in here my god <laughs> so all right this was this was intended to be the metal shop uh but some of the woodworking tools made their way in here okay so uh, so coming through the door, got uh, laser cutter engraver here uh, <laughs> that I got as a kit and put together. Uh, well, I got some of the parts as a kit and then had to order everything else from you know a dozen different suppliers. Yeah, uh, you could probably order everything from Amazon now, but you know, ten years ago when I built yep. that, uh, not so much. Yeah, uh, and then um, my uh, Delta Rockwell lathe from 1942 uh, -huh. uh so still yes. still yes. kicking yes. along with its original motor there. down there does Dev's collection ever work on a lathe i've never seen anybody using a lathe where there wasn't crap all over the place oh no stuff goes everywhere but what it does do is it gets all the fine you okay. know all the all the powder really yeah. does get sucked into the dust collection you have big chips all over the place but I'm not too worried about breathing those, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm more worried about that real fine dust that just kind of gets everywhere and, and you breathe and yeah. Uh, so you don't have one of those helmets like Ashley Harwood with the uh, jet pack on the back and all that stuff. No, I have one of those. Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brandon, is there anything you don't have? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, there's, there's always stuff to look at and buy. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, here's my CNC machine. Uh, I built that. It's on a torsion box table. Uh, and the inserts, uh, there's inserts in all of those holes, but they go through the table and I can hook a vacuum to the bottom and use it as a vacuum table too. Oh. So, uh. So you can screw stuff down to it or or whatever. Is that common for people to figure out how to use their CNC as a vacuum table? That's the first time I've heard of anybody doing that. Uh, you know, if you're doing thin goods or, or stuff that is real um, flexible, uh, sucking it down to the table is really great. Okay. Uh, you know, if I'm uh, like I've done some stuff in like real thin, you know, three millimeter like door skin or Luon. And uh, it, it's really hard to hold it down because it loses so much structure as you're cutting it. Yeah. Uh, so if you can use the vacuum table to suck it down, and especially small parts just don't go flying everywhere. So. Um, I got you. So the, was, vac uh, the vacuum part of it is more to aid or assist in, in, the, in the cutting. The, right, yeah. Uh, not... Yeah not as a vacuum press normally per se no 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 okay. no it doesn't have that kind of suction but if you lay a you lay a sheet of plywood on there or or yeah. you know whatever it'll it'll hold it from cool. sliding sideways you can still lift it off but it doesn't doesn't move around sideways on you all right and this is a pretty large one i think you told me earlier that you started off much smaller and then you've you've done most of this diy to make it larger that's correct. Yeah, this is this is a one of a kind. So uh, okay. I used I used the small ones to make parts for the bigger one and and went that way. Okay. Uh, it's a it's about to get its seventh upgrade. Uh, I'm going to replace that that DeWalt router with uh, a three horse spindle, water cooled oh. spindle. Oh, so that's uh, this is the project cart for the uh, spindle upgrade. So, all right, cool. 
So that's going to happen here in the future. And uh, right now I'm still running dust collection off of a shop vac that's down underneath it. Yeah. Uh, but that's going to get hooked in right there. Cool. So cool. I'm going to hook that into the, the main trunk of the dust collector. So. Sometimes we all wonder if we uh, ever going to get everything done and get to busy woodworking, you know. But then we think of one, just one more thing I got to get done first. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you do some knife work or just metal grinding? Um, or I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used one of these. I took a, a knife making class and used one of these, and it was just so nice for grinding metal. Uh, you know, compared to a, a bench grinder or whatever, right? Uh, that I decided to build one. So this is this is the um, Housemade Revolution Four. Um, so uh, guy online, you can buy the kit. Uh, you can even it comes basically with almost everything you need now, except the motor and the wheels. Um, I had to source my own steel tubes for it for this one. Uh huh. Uh, but it's. It's on a VFD, so you can, you know, go. It's a three-phase motor running on 220 with the with the VFD, so you can, you know, have speed control and everything else. Cool. Yeah, and then uh, welding. So I got right. I got a TIG welder here, and my old trusty MIG welder from the 90s over here. I've had that a long time. Uh, I'm pretty decent with a MIG welder. I'm pretty awful at TIG welding. Yeah. So I'm I'm working on learning TIG. There's some of uh, us that don't even know the difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so you're safe with me. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then mounting some deer skulls for my father-in-law. Uh-huh. And then the big Clearview Cyclone dust collector with the, the Binford bin uh-huh and is that yeah. that service in your wood shop as well right yeah yeah that that goes all the way over there through the wall and into the wood shop and then a little bit on this side too how many so, horsepower is that that's a five horse oh my god pretty cool yeah pretty so, cool uh and then i got a welding fixture table here with a you know a bunch of clamps and magnets and stuff uh what have you thing's... done with the welding mostly what have you created or is it repair work for farm machinery or what no not really uh most of it's uh just making stuff i made uh my wife made some jewelry and has got it in the shop so i made a stand for her to display her jewelry on uh, -huh. uh i make some wind sculptures and some kinetic sculptures and things Okay. Uh, so just kind of a bunch of stuff, you know, just so, whatever, so, whatever yeah. needs doing. So still in the hobby category. Yeah. Yeah. All right. well, I've made like 30 or 40 of those wind sculptures. So yeah. Uh, okay. Enough of those. Starting to get uh, me on hobby there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more air reels. Uh, I got a 20 ton press. All right. Trusty, uh, metal cutting band saw. Uh, this is a cool thing. This is a 1952 Atlas seven inch metal shaper. Uh, so that ram up on top, if you've never seen a metal shaper, you should look, look them up because they're really cool. Uh, but that ram on top slides back and forth and it just shaves off the metal that you clamp into this vice. So uh -huh. this part just kind of slides forward and backward and just shaves metal off. Uh -huh. They've mostly been replaced with, you know, mills now, right. uh, but right. they're they're fun to operate and, and really cool. Okay. So. Well, you know, your wife must really be mad at you because you don't give her any space for anything. <laughs> and uh, Well, she gets her own space. She does? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, anything else in your man cave first? Uh, you know, just a little Harbor Freight metal lathe. Uh, there's that drill press I was talking about that's got a, a wobbly uh, spindle on it now. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's pretty old. It's from the 70s. This was actually my grandfather's that I got in the 90s when he passed away. Uh, so it's it's yeah. traveled quite a bit. I was kind of sad it got damaged, but 
Yeah, so it, it got damaged in a fall, you said, while moving it? Yeah, uh, the forklift I was using uh, blew a hydraulic line, and the and it dropped. The, the <laughs> carriage dropped, so it just yeah. ended up on the ground, stuck between the trailer and the forklift, and it, oh, it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> hydraulic fluid spraying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so. Tears flowing everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Well, at least it didn't do it on the saw stop. All right. So, and I've got a, a little welding curtain here I can pull across this doorway. Uh, my seven-year-old runs around here, and he knows that, you know, if that's closed, don't come in. So. How many kids you got? Just the one. <laughs> you, you don't say just when you're talking about kids, because one, <laughs> one is a handful. <laughs> so. Yeah, so one because, of those. Uh, Particularly, they don't have brothers or sisters to keep them busy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you come over this way, you see my air conditioner blowing blowing cool air at me. And I've got I've got a little table here and a desk and a toolbox and the most important part, my kegerator. Oh, there you go. So <laughs> if you need some beer. A little window into the shop. So oh. You can look in there. That's cool. Uh, they can see if you're doing something dangerous before they barge in and tap you on the shoulder. Exactly. And then the rest of the building. Oh, my God. So this is where we go out of the small workshop area. This this gets into <laughs> a large workshop. Huh. You said that. But this is my wife's art studio over here. Which we oh. both spill into this main space sometimes. So. Oh, cool. What does she's she? Got, uh, what does she do primarily with her artwork? Uh, she paints. That's one Painting? of her paintings there. Okay. Yeah, and then she, she's got a bunch going on here. Yeah. Those are some more of her paintings that are in progress. Yeah. Well, I don't know what else she's got going? She's got a couple more over here going on. So. My wife is not going to get to see this video. <laughs> No way. <laughs> and then uh, this is kind of an entryway area. We've got a 3D printer and a vinyl cutter, uh, okay. which I use that vinyl cutter a lot more than I would have thought. Really? Uh, okay. Doing, doing masks and patterns and stickers. Uh, and then that's my wife's office. I'm supposed to be putting uh, a bunch of built-in bookcases in there, but the price of the lumber got a little ridiculous. So. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, that's your little Rolls Royce. Yeah, it's uh, it's leaking in a few dozen places, so I got to get that straightened out. Um, this uh, this building that we're in used to make models. That's what they did here. They built it and had a shop making models, and we found this model of the one of the water treatment plants in California, actually uh, the San Jose one. Yeah. Uh, strapped to the roof. Or strapped to the rafters, so I don't know why it never got got sent out. But huh? It's a so that's the cool. kind of that's the kind of work that they did. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, so we got a paint room, which this was here when we got it. Uh, I added the filters. Uh, yeah. They had a different kind of setup. Yeah. Um, and I got a little blasting cabinet in here too. Yeah. Uh, my air compressor is right on the other side of the wall, and these things kind of take a bunch of air, so. Well, I could use that room right now. I'm about ready to paint a uh, trellis and the with all the little cross beams and everything. It's like okay, I, I I do have a little minuscule spray painter that I'm gonna use for about the third time. That's your bike. Yeah, that's that's my Harley. It's a uh, 04. Okay. Road King. All right, I'm gonna bring you back. Uh, let's switch back to your uh, front camera unless you got anything else and by no, this time I think you know i think by this time we've got everybody that is watching this totally upset with you and uh <laughs> so <laughs> probably shouldn't show them anymore even if you have it <laughs> yeah well there's the back shed <laughs> okay Hey, you were um, you were working on getting some sort of rule change in Alabama regarding home beer delivery or something? Yeah, uh, they are. Uh, 
right now it's uh, illegal to deliver beer, you know, Instacart or anything. Uh, and I think in October that's going to change. Uh, but we'll see how Alabama's uh, Alcohol Control Board interprets the law. Okay. Um, <laughs> The, the lawmakers make the law, and then the, the ABC interprets it uh, to what they want it to mean. <laughs> okay. Well, I got to tell you, that was, I'm here filming, and I forget that I'm filming, and I should be switching cameras and texts, but I'm so mesmerized by all of your stuff in your shop, and so, so very jealous, but uh, I'll live with it. So, Brandon, yeah. thank you very much. Uh that was great. Stay safe in your workshop. Anything, uh, is it not a fair thing to say? Anything else you want to say? And then put a guy on a spot. But uh, we'll just we'll just leave no, it there. Unless uh, you got any advice for people about workshop organization? Uh, not really. You know, do what do what works for you. Uh, I basically lay stuff out and uh, look at where I leave it when I'm done using it. And then try and have it have a home near there. Okay. All right. So, you know, if I get a bunch of tools out, I look at where they end up. And then I try and find homes for them near there so that that's where they'll be when I need them again. All right. Because that shows you what your production flow is. So you start organizing according to your flow. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to switch now just to me. And I want to. Tell everybody, this is just one of a series of uh, workshops, uh, tours that we're going to do in the future. This is about our fifth or sixth one. I got two or three in the old editing jar. Uh, and if you like these, then the only way to keep them coming is for you to hit a like button. Uh, if you didn't like it, hit the thumb down button twice. That way, Brandon and I will know that you really didn't like the workshop tour. And uh, subscribe. And stay safe in your workshop. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.